Hello, my name is Morgan. I am your friendly florist and I am here to teach you a couple of things about what it is that we're doing today. Um, when you get your flowers, you're gonna receive a bunch of boxes of floor pieces, a box of bouquets, a little box of boutonnieres, five buckets of gorgeous flowers, and a little gift bag. So, uh, first I'm gonna just sort of go through what all of that is. Um, this gift bag has your ribbon for your bouquet and some supplies for your bud vases and a little uh, emergency kit just in case you need anything. There's all kinds of like, there's push pins and various sizes of rubber bands and a band-aid and um, a zip tie. You can fix all manner of floral emergencies with what's in here. So just in case something goes wrong, we're good. Um, all right, so first we're gonna talk about bud bases. So I have several here. Um, best practices when you're working with flowers is to get like a trash can or something to put it on so that you're not doing this for however long you're working. It really helps you enjoy yourself. Um, so I have a bunch of different things here, um, different sizes and shapes to kind of talk through what kinds of things we're looking for. Um, size. There we go. So um, when you get out all your bud bases, I need you to arrange them into groups, tall, medium, and small. Um, that will help you with your workflow. That will help you as you start to process the flowers. Um, I do want to point out a few things. If you have something that is way taller than everything else and it's not very, very narrow, I would not use it because it's going to be very hard to fill and it's not going to be proportional to the rest of your table. And it's frequently people have little things like this. This is not a bud base. Bud bases are designed to hold a bud, right? So they have a very narrow top uh, on, on everything. Things that have this wide of a top are going to be harder to fill and they're not going to quite look right with everything else. So um, best practices would be to hold up on these or use these to make a small arrangement to put on a welcome table or a bar or something like that. Um, the rest of these are little jars and bottles and they're sort of the perfect little diameter. I know that you have a set that I'm very familiar with and so you're going to see lots of those. Um, so that's bud bases. Next, I'm going to talk to you about the flowers that we have. Alrighty, so you're going to get five buckets and I have intentionally separated them out into five groups and we're going to go through them together. Um, this is your branching flowers. This is your filler and your greens and your focal flowers, your roses, and these are your lines. So we've got the stock like your bridesmaids, we've got our little berries, and we've got all of this lovely navy colored delphinium. Love the, the tall. I have removed quite a bit of foliage off of these already, but I have left them in a semi-natural state so that you can decide what looks right and what doesn't because um, sometimes you keep foliage, sometimes you don't. So I've removed all the stuff that you definitely don't want on here. And now I'm gonna show you how to process each of these groups and tell you a little bit about what kinds of um, designs might be useful for each of them. Before we get started, we're gonna go through what is in your little gift bag here. I've included a few things that you may or may not have. Um, 
First off, the things I have not included are a pair of scissors. Um, kitchen shears work fine. I like to have a little piece of scissors for, I'm sorry, a little scissor for pieces that are kind of fine because sometimes like the big loppers that you use for gardening or kitchen shears are gonna be like, you know, we've all seen these in the garden. Uh, these are great for big stems, but I like to have a little pair of scissors with a, with a nice little pointy tip for the more fine work. And you'll be doing a lot of fine work with like bases. So the next thing that I recommend that you have are some gloves you're getting married tomorrow and you're my nails aren't great looking i'm just gonna put it that way so put on some gloves uh dishwashing gloves work garden gloves work uh if i can find my extra pair i will include it in the bag and if not you may be on your own there um i have trash bags very helpful i like to go ahead and open one up and get a bowl or a bucket or something and have it next to me so that I can go ahead and work through whatever I need. It also sometimes works to just use a box and put your bag down in it. Um, you are going to generate quite a few stems, so it's nice to just kind of have something at the get-go uh, next to you to toss stuff into as you cut. The other thing that I've included is a shower curtain from Dollar Tree. Put this down on the floor underneath you, just trust me. Um, if you're the kind of person that trips, you can take it down, but but it'll be fine. Put this down underneath your feet uh, because it gets messy sometimes. And then once you step on the stems over and over again, you got all the stuff stuck to your floor. This is your friend. Uh, the next things I have in here are three sizes of cups. This is going to help you when you are processing your flowers, and we'll go through that in a second. Um, so we've got our small, medium, large. You may grab some mason jars and expand this set, but this will get you started. Uh, the other thing we have is a funnel. So my favorite way to fill up bud bases, you know, you get all of them together. Um, you can fill them all under a sink, but the water gets everywhere and you're dripping and it's a mess. So what I like to do is get a funnel and a measuring cup. I usually use about half a cup just as a starter, um, unless I'm doing something very small that only holds that much. And uh, you don't have to fill a bud vase all the way up to the top. Uh, if it's a very large one, maybe I'll add more, but just fill a pitcher up or this guy with water and just boop, Boop, boop. And that way everybody gets the same amount of water. Uh, you're not going to have some running out before the other. Uh, and you know that nothing's going to drip and it's going to be clean, especially if you're doing this at the venue because it can get really messy. Um, and you don't want to mop right before your wedding. Like that's a, that's a hassle. So that is what is in your little kit. Real quickly, I'll show you the rest. Um, this is your emergency kit that I told you about earlier. And then there's another packet in here with your bridal bouquet ribbon. Um, so let's start processing some flowers. I am going to grab my cups here. So um, like we've talked about before, you're going to kind of establish a little bit of a workflow as you're going through these, through these flowers. Uh, what I recommend is that you start with your fillers and your greens and your kind of branchy flowers. Um, the lines are almost all done and the focals are almost all clean too. You're not gonna need to process very much with those. So as far as your filler goes, you will start with the filler filler. The filler 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 is, um, we've got limonium, which is this purpley guy and this kind of white blue. Um, and this bluer purple, uh, and then we've got your baby's breath in here, and we've got some blue thistle. All of these are great for bud bases because 
They have a branching habit to them. So as I'm going through, I'll take the stem out and pop them off like that. Uh, boop. So now you have a very long stem and you have some medium stems. And you have some small stems. This will come in super handy as you um, go through to fill your bud bases. So you've separated all of your bud bases out into small, medium, large. Now you're going to separate some of your flowers into small, medium, large. You do not have to do this whole bucket at a time. Do like five or six stems of each thing and then design. And then do five or six stems and then design. It'll help you keep you organized. Um, with things like this that are just a little bit too dense, you can. There we go, now we've got our large. We've got two smalls off of that. Um, the same thing kind of applies to this guy. Um, some of them are this perfect little cup of flowers. Some of them have, let's see, can we find one that has a, a random, yeah, some of them have this guy here. That is an excellent little thistle. And then these are kind of, you can cut the stem wherever you want to, but whenever I see one of those little thistles, I'll pop him off and put him in there as I'm processing through the flowers. Um, the same goes with baby's breath. Uh, take a couple of stems of it out at a time. Don't ever do everything at once. It's a waste of time. You never know what you're gonna need. Um, if anything's broken, that's what height it is. Uh, and I am snapping things because I'm very used to working with flowers and I know how to do it so that it's a clean cut. Um, but I've just realized watching myself in the camera, you should probably use scissors to do this. It's just easier. Um, so now we've got trash, trash. We've got a clean stem here and then all the broken bits. Um, I'm probably gonna cut him off here. And then that will be my tall stem. This will be my shorty guy. And this broken bit is a good shorty, and this one is too busted. So those are your filler flowers. Um, I'm just gonna do one more limonium real quick so that we can get to designing. Um, Sometimes you can break down the mediums uh, into even more smaller ones. Um, that's what I love about these fillers is that there, there's so many joints in the flower, you can really break them down into whatever size they need to be. So here's our fillers. Now we're going to talk greenery. Uh, I've included quite a bit of greenery options here for you. Um, the first is super simple. This is your Italian Ruscus. It's a straight line. You don't have to process it until you're ready to put it in the vase. And then you uh, decide how many leaves you want on it. And when you find that out, you go like that. And it's ready to go. Uh, love that green. This is a Gonis. And we love her too. It has this great, I love the smell. Um, but this is a super branchy flower, green, uh, and I like to use it sparingly, like one piece in a bud base. Um, and you just kind of cut the joints going up, and it will sort itself quite nicely. Um, ta -da. It probably doesn't need too much editing unless you want it to be a little bit more sleek. What I want to tell you about this is that this part of the stem doesn't have very much in the way of thorns. If you run your hand up it, it will cut you. Um, and there are thorns at the joints. So 
put it at the bottom and when you figure out this would be better for lower bases or things that are particularly wide, um, I would decide just how much greener you want to deal with here. Ooh. Editing is a huge part of floral design uh, because Mother Nature likes to make things big and fluffy and sometimes that's not what you're going for. That would be cute. Um, and you just decide where you want it. I like to put greenery at the lip of the, uh, of the glass and cut it, plop it in. And then that functions as a nice little base. I love this, it's, it's wispy uh, and sweet. Um, the big ones here, I have left fairly, I cleaned off a little bit of the greens to keep it hydrated, but uh, this is called Myrtle. And Myrtle is fun because there are lots of branches on it that are quite small and some that are quite medium. And so what I like to do with it is follow the stem down to where all these little branchy bits start and you make your first snip there. And I'm gonna get really close here. Okay, coming around. If you see this, you can see where um, the branches start and they've all kind of come out of this little joint here. I hope you can see that. Nope, you can't see squat, hold on. This is a display piece. So if you see where all of these branches come in and meet at the stem, take your fine scissors and cut right there like that. And um, the rest of the little pieces will cover that cut. So you'll get another, another cut out of it. So then you let the little branch you guys come and you find another spot where all of the branchy guys start again that's the right length that you want and cut there and then you can kind of assess this guy is pretty big he's he's strong enough to stand on his own two feet so we're gonna cut him so now we have four pieces from that one and none of them look too jankety all by themselves um. This bottom piece may or may not be useful to you. It's pretty chunky. Um, it may be useful if you are doing something like with a rose, um, you know, that will is hefty enough that it won't look gigantic. Uh, but this may be a discard situation. Uh, the more slender the piece of, of greenery, the better it tends to act in a bud base. Um, so once you take your little snip that we did, the trick with flowers in a vase to make them look nice is you don't ever want leaves under the water. So we're gonna kind of see where it sits and then it is also okay to do this with myrtle. You just strip it off and put it in. You can do as many as you want. Um, this is that branchy guy, that second cut we took. And I'm gonna see what he looks like. Once again, I really like the, the greens to be in the very bottom of the face. Um, so that's nice and bushy if you want it full. If you want it to be just kind of slender and on its own, you can do that. Um, one of the tricks is to either is to work in odd numbers right odd numbers tend to be more aesthetically pleasing so one or three usually two isn't as um, aesthetically pleasing the difference there being uh, if you have one that has a bunch of branches then you can you can do you can get away with two and it still looks full uh, but I wouldn't do one of those um, it just doesn't quite look right in your mind's eye. Uh, so we have our greens there. Uh, this is a spotted mint that I'm obsessed with. I harvested this from Florida last week. 
uh, from the side of the road. I love you very much because it is white with purple spots. It's so much fun. This did come from nature. So there are some pieces you're not gonna wanna use. Um, and some pieces that if you become very attached to them, you can pick off anything that's not aesthetically pleasing uh, or give it a good shake, but I love this stuff. This functions as a green or a lime. It can go either way. I have it with the greenery um, because that's where it fit. So finally, we have your branchy flowers here. There are three kinds of branchy flowers in here. One is this lovely muted chrysanthemum. I like her for bouquets, which is why I have her. She's in the bridal bouquet. Um, but I'm keeping her in with your bud vases because she's particularly long stems. So if you want to use her in a vase, you just snip off individual, I do, individual stems, take the leaves off, um, and they'll go quite nicely. The trick with taking off these little branchy guys. Um, usually there's a there's an empty stem that I just go ahead and cut off because it's ugly. Uh, start from the bottom and work your way up. So eventually you will come to the last two or even the last one uh, and you can make a cut that now gives you a very long one that looks quite nice. You can kind of edit down the little parts where you cut to make it look a little less knobbly, but now you have a nice long piece um, in addition to your smaller, your smaller little guys. Uh, so I don't have many of those in there, but it was left over from the bouquet and they're pretty similar principles with this. This is called Lysianthus and I am a fan. She's a queen. Um, She's so pretty. Let me see, let me get some good pieces. I've already edited these down quite a bit, but Lysianthus is a multi-branching flower. So once again, I work from the bottom and get a nice little flower. Um, and this can act as focal or as a part of a, a group. Um, Lysianthus will frequently have buds and sometimes they fall off. This is what your little pointy snips are for. Um, and you can just go ahead and take off anything that's, any stems that don't have a flower at the end of them. Uh, I also tend to take off most of the foliage on Lysianthus. It comes off very easily, so why not? Um, and then you can decide, I think here, I'm gonna cut this one to get another small guy and one really tall one. Um, same here, take these guys, and then I think I'm gonna take her off. This gives us a medium and a tall guy. Uh, the Lysianthus for you is coming, there's sort of a mauve one and an ivory one. And the last, but not least, this is called Clematis. She is finicky, but she is gorgeous. It's, it's a vine traditionally, but it's been cut to use in uh, bouquet work. So if you see the, from the back, it's a stem with a branch. Each branch has a stem with a flower on it. And most little nodes here, the nodes like the little intersections have stems with leaves and a stem with branch. So you get two branches, two leaves, and then that central stem. Um, I've removed a lot of the greenery for you. The greenery on Clematis is finicky. Sometimes it is gorgeous. Sometimes it just dies on you. So it's going to be a game day call. Um, I've left a lot of it on top so that you can include it if it's still beautiful. And if it's not, you can just snip off whatever doesn't look good. Um, the reason I tell you about the structure here is you've got some options based on how long things are, but these lower guys tend to be longer, and this is the perfect bud base. I mean, it's adorable. It's got a flower, it's got the foliage. You don't need anything else. You have a little little guy somewhere, and like, it's just so cute. You can do multiples. Um, 
I'm gonna do what I've been talking about. So I tuck this off. Um, I took this guy off, but I want this one, but I want him to be a little bit taller. So I'm actually gonna cut that central guy like that. And now I have a very long stem. Um, which I'm gonna cut and shape down so that now we can have some varying heights here. Um, so cute. This now is a good medium height stem, depending on how the foliage looks. Um, you may be able to fit it all down in something by bending the stems, or you may just wanna take these lateral uh, leaves off. But now this guy will go nicely in one of these. Um, we talked about that principle of three. So uh, this may be one of those circumstances where it doesn't apply. Maybe there are no rules. Uh, but if you wanted to, you know, spruce it up with something, you could put a focal flower here or something crispy on top, like maybe some of this limonium if it was very wispy. Kind of float over it. To give it that third or not. Um, this would be another circumstance where baby's breath might be useful because it does give you that little cloud effect. Um, so you can stick him down in there and then have the stuff coming out of it. Um, this is also a great opportunity for that agonis I was talking about. Take off whichever leaves you think need to be taken and then have him kind of float out and give you that third uh, component. Uh, so those are your three kind of branchy flowers that I've included. Next, I promise it's almost over. Um, for your long uh, straight guys, we have stock and delphinium and these uh, Calamanthia leaves, I've forgotten what the purpley leaves and the purpley berries. Uh, my only note here is that stock, delightful as it is, and it smells, it smells like cloves, I love it. Uh, stock, the bottom petals tend to get, the bottom florets tend to get kind of skunky as time goes on. I've already removed these guys. <laughs> Um, so every day you have to kind of check your stock and take off that bottom flower if it's not doing good. This applies both to the stock you put in your arrangements and your bridesmaids bouquets. So all of the pretty stock bouquets that you see delivered, the ones that I normally do, the last thing I do before I deliver the bouquets is go through and kind of edit out anything that's kind of started to brown. The cool thing about stock is that even if you take off all the fluffy flowers, it's still got a really nifty shape and it will continue to bloom, right? Um, it is prolific. So you can edit it almost to just this stuff and it still looks great in a bug face. Um, similar is this, uh, although it's less finicky. Um, it's just very delicate. If you look at it, once you get it, it they're just, like you can see through the petals, they're gorgeous. Um, but they're not robust, so be gentle with them and they will treat you well. Uh, spikes like this, I personally really like in a tall, slender bud base. Uh, I really don't think much more is needed in a tall, slender bud base than one, maybe two uh, pieces of delphinium or stock. There's two again. I really shouldn't have said that. Um, rules are made to be broken, right? Oh, see? They break. If they do break, and they will. Um, this is why we have our little short cup. Cut it at the break, pull off the flowers until you have enough of a stem to go in the water, and then it will sit nicely in an itty bitty guy. Even if you have to edit it all the way up to that top flower, um, and again, use scissors. Even if you edit it all the way up to that top flower, it will still be 
quite nice. Um, that's why I like to have everything ready to go while I'm processing. Um, So these line flowers are really great for getting a height in a vase. Um, if you are going to do more than one in a vase, it's important to stagger them. That's what I was going to show you before it broke. Um, I like to find the wispiest, and that's my tall, and then the more chunky one I kind of put just below it so that they sit naturally like they would have in the field. Um, and then just cut them so that the base hits about where the glass goes and then that will be that'll be a very nice little little moment same goes for stock uh, and then last but not least are your roses your roses are pretty much good uh, the only one that you may need to edit or want to edit are these spray roses if you decide you want to use these um, there are some very long laterals that are almost like a medium height stem all in their own right. So do what you did with the daisies here, um, or the chrysanthemums, the pink guys, and start from the bottom and edit up until you get to a long stem that you like, and then use all the little guys in, in their own way. Um, the roses, you may or may not have seen this on TikTok, they're prolific. Uh, I left the greenery that was pretty on. I like to use roses low in bud bases. In fact, I like to use them in short bud bases. Uh, visually, if you look at a plant as it's growing, um, the older flowers are at the bottom, the bigger flowers are at the bottom, and they get progressively smaller as you go up, and it gets progressively airy as you grow up. And so as you go up. And so as you design, I like to keep that in mind that you want, you know, most of the volume to be at the base with little wispies kind of coming up. So this, this is big. Um, if you like foliage, keep it. If not, it comes off really well. I've removed 90% of the, uh, Lord mercy. Thorns. There we go. See, this is why I need to learn to edit videos. Um, when you get your rose, take everything off of it, you can either <laughs> blow on it a little bit to open it up, and uh, it might open up the way that you want it to, and if it doesn't, turn upside down, and you just kind of gently do one of those, <laughs> and then it's opened up quite nicely. This doesn't work as well on the purple ones as it does on the little Moby pink guys, but the pink ones will blow up real big. So that's what I like to do there. And then I cut it so that it's just at the base. Um, and then I can either add some kind of wispy or lime um, or greenery to go with it, but I try to make sure that whatever I choose is is light and airy um so that this is the main focal um, i would even do it shorter than that um, and the bigger the bloom the smaller the vase so that it's really a showpiece like you're sitting at the table and you can look down into the rows and see how beautiful it is because they're gorgeous um if you're really brave you can tease them open i like to use my pinky finger because for some reason i think it's cleaner um, because you have to be very gentle. Uh, but if you're, if you're particularly brave, you can get away with that and it'll open up very nicely. Um, that's it. So, I'm going to pause here. Alrighty, starting over. Um, I'm going to give you just quick, because that was really long. I'm sorry if I rambled. Put it on two times speed if you need to. Um, small vases. Small vases look good with single big blooms in them. Love that look. Like, honestly, that's all I do. Um, if you want to, they also are very good for little bitty things. 
If you have a bunch of little bitty things that have broken off, um, that is a great place to make a little moment. Um, whenever you're doing anything, I try to make sure that there are always varying heights. Uh, even if you can't get, even if everything's relatively the same height, if you can get something in there to draw the eye up, it does uh, help a lot visually with whether or not the vase looks appropriately scaled. Um, so I like to have the bigger, chunkier things at the bottom and then kind of a medium height and then a whiskey. Um, so bear that in mind and that goes for all sizes really. So here's our friend, the little asparagus fern again. I'm gonna cut even more off make him even shorter um, and let him be sort of the visual bulk at the base. And then I'm gonna add um, some Lysianthus. Lysianthus is great because it has a bunch of buds. So you can get that visual height um, that I was talking about with just what's already on the plant. Um, but I like to go ahead and try to create that as intentionally as I can. Um, so that you see we have multiple heights represented here. Um, yeah. yeah, so that would do it for me. If you wanted something, typically bud bases are facing this way in a circle, so I don't worry about the back, but they don't necessarily have to be 360. There's gonna be a candle here, or there's gonna be another bud base here. Uh, but if you want it to be 360, you wanna give it some depth, you can always throw a little bit of your filler in there because that's what we have. Um, a little bit of that in there to kind of blow it out back. So that's a good recipe for a medium. Another good medium recipe is um, a bunch of filler. I know it's weird, but when I do, I either want like this much filler or I want a bunch of it uh, and like single variety. So let's see, where's the rest of my When there's water in here, that doesn't happen. Um, so again, I'm creating bulk here. And then I have a little bit more height in this piece in the center. And then I'm going to add even more height with this center top here. Um, I love this. I love this with baby's breath. I love this with limonium. She's a little wonky. She may need some, she may need a friend. Um, It's in front. You can have wonkiness as long as visually there's enough at the base to kind of fill it out. So a bunch of filler looks great because remember they're all gonna be together. So you're gonna have one like this and one like this and together they make this really nice cohesive moment. Um, same thing for our more full guy. So uh, if you can visualize that you get that kind of gradation in uh, size and shape and color and texture. This is also, because this is so tall, this is a great moment to remind you that doing just a spike um, is lovely. So once you get it all together, it makes a really nice moment. I know that you wanted things to be more full um, and go bananas. Uh, but I do want to encourage you that it is okay to put a single variety in a bud base. It does not look sparse when it is accompanied by all of its other friends. Um, last thing. If you wanted this to be a little bit more visually interesting, you could include a spike in all of this. Um, right? Have a ton of filler with a little bit of filler wispy and then have a line flower coming out of the middle of it. That's a great way to use that. Um, 
these guys are so wacky. I love them. They would be a nice accompaniment to a big focal flower because they're, they're just kind of pow. You know, they've got a lot of presence. They're a fuchsia berry. So um, I try to pair them with something heavy, um, but I've included them to do a similar thing. You may or may not want to use any of these. It depends on how heavy you want things to go. Uh, I include them because it is possible to edit stems. So I'm gonna show you that real quick. You take your scissors and you cut along this vein up to wherever you want the bottom of the leaf to be. And then pull and it will cut it um, exactly like along the correct line. I just got a text message from you. Alrighty, well, a very sweet man came and took all of my flowers. So, very punctual guy. He was 15 minutes early and I wasn't done talking yet because it turns out I do a lot of that. I apologize for the length of these videos. Once again, if I knew how to edit, I would probably be better off. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about your bouquets. Without your bouquets, we're going to visualize. I have some ribbon. It is much prettier than this and not white in your bag. You're going to take it out tonight, shake it out so that it doesn't have any crease marks on it. Tomorrow, you're going to lay your bouquet down flat on a clean table. It's going to be okay, I promise. Um, face up, obviously. Find the center of your pretty ribbon. Place it on top. Come around. And then tie a square knot. If you um, recall what that looks or feels like, it's right over left and left over right, or just double knot it um, with the knot in front. So that, and then your Ribbon should hang down. If you want to cut it to a different length, totally understand. You can tie a bow if you prefer one. I don't. Um, I'm not a bow person, but uh, if you want to tie a bow, you can. If you want to cut it to a different length, I left them fairly long so that you can do that. Um, what I like about this kind of ribbon is that you don't have to have fancy scissors to cut it in like that perfectly straight line. Uh, because it is a raw silk ribbon, so it frays at the end. So just snip it whatever length you want, um, and then come back through with your fingernail and kind of pluck at it, and then kind of mussy it up, and you have that raw edge again. Um, and it doesn't have to be bored straight or you know cut with the sharpest knife you've ever used, like. Uh, in order to get that perfect clean look because there is no perfect clean look with raw silk. It's raw silk, there's a raw edge. So um, that is how I would do the ribbon on your bridal bouquet. I did not include extra ribbon for your bridesmaids bouquets because I tried it and it was just, it was too much. Um, there was so much emerald that it was just, it didn't, didn't look right. So I have wrapped your bridesmaids bouquets with just a simple wrap. Um, the ribbon is a little damp, but there's not streamers, so it's fine. Um, just when you pull everything out of the water at the hotel or the church or wherever, have a rag, have a washcloth or something, pull it out um, and dry off the ends because all the bouquets are in water. Um, note about the water in both the buckets and the bridesmaids vases it looks pretty skunky that is a floral preservative <laughs> it is not there's not like crazy stuff going on in your water it's very cloudy on purpose um that prevents the flowers from continuing to grow it's kind of like the opposite of flower food uh, so that is why your um Water looks weird. If you want to put the bridesmaid vases on like your head table or use them somehow in decor, that's good. I'd recommend changing out the water um, on game day because it looks pretty weird. Um, let's see, what else was on my list? 
going to pause it here and start over. Have your floor piece. Um, and there are three pieces. The two side pieces are longer on one side and the center piece um, has, has a, a more compact form. I have labeled them with little cardboard tags, A, B, and C. So it should be relatively self-explanatory on how to set them up. Um, the longer ends obviously <laughs> go, on the, go on the ends and the more blunt end smooshes together. All you need to do is literally just place the center one in the center of where you want it at the church and then smoosh the other two sides together. Um, you can have it be straight, you can have it curve, um, you can you can make whatever shape you want it to make. Take the tags out. Um, the pink roses are I opened them. I spun them like I showed you to do with the bud bases, um, and they're very open, very flowery, I'm sorry, very billowy rose. Um, I've included four or five in your bud base bucket. Check them in the morning in the floor arrangement, and if any of them look not great, pull one of those from the bucket, spin it, and put it in. Um, feel free to replace them. Uh, replace anything that doesn't look great. Um, a lot of wedding floristry is like the day of, okay, we built this, but that didn't do right, and this didn't do right. It's nature, you know. Um, wedding floristry is a performance art, so it only has to look good at that exact moment. <laughs> uh, so the, the thing that makes me nervous about drop-off orders is that I, I can't, or pick-up orders is that I can't like edit things for you. Um, so I have included enough extra greenery. I've kept the greenery long. I've kept most of the roses relatively long uh, so that you can make those substitutions if you need to or just want to. Uh, let's see. Water your four pieces. The center of them is in a little plastic tray with foam on it. Um, so when I say water them, I mean like maybe three ounces, like, like water them just a little bit. Um, when you're taking them out of the box, reach down into the box and there's a lip, um, kind of like this. There's a lip um, on the tray. It's much more pronounced on the tray and you'll be able to put your fingers under that. That way you make sure you're the whole thing up together. Um, the trays are only a foot long, so uh, they don't extend the whole width of the piece, so you can really get under it and hold it from the bottom. Um, Already, final thoughts. Congratulations, y'all. I am so excited for you. I hope that you have just the most beautiful wedding ever and that everything goes perfectly. Um, if it doesn't, if something goes wrong, call me. I will have my phone on me all day tomorrow. Um, I will be working a wedding in North Georgia. And so I, I, I will make every effort to hear the call and answer it. Um, if something goes if something goes south, absolutely call me, um, text me pictures, FaceTime me, whatever it is we need to do, we can we can solve issues. Um, the bouquets are stuffed full. If something doesn't look right, just cut it as far down as you can, and and it will probably not be missed. Um, the same goes for the floral meadow. Um, you have enough extras with the floral meadow that you can replace anything you need to, but uh, with the bouquets, if something pops off, I tried to make sure that everything in that bouquet was rock solid, um, but I have been, it's the end of the fall, or I'm sorry, it's the beginning of fall, end of summer, um, and the season change has made the heads on like the dahlias and the roses and things a little finicky. So if you have any problems, just cut the stem as low as you can. 
I would not recommend trying to replace it uh, because the the bouquet is is really tightly wrapped. Um, and if it just looks horrible, give me a call. But I would I would recommend against taking it apart. Um, I included some dahlias that the heads popped off of. <laughs> like I said, it's been it's been happening. Um, I tried to include extra in your bouquet so that it would be nice and full no matter what happened. Um, this is the behind the scenes stuff with wedding flowers that you never hear about. Uh, we all do this. We all kind of overstuff hoping that everything turns out great. Um, but I included some heads that popped off. They'd be great on a cake. You can stick a toothpick in the back of them and they, they would be really pretty on a cake. If not, toss them in the compost, in the trash, um, either way. Put them in the fridge. If you have a Tupperware and a damp paper towel, that would work great um, to keep them nice and fresh. Um, the same goes for the boutonnieres. They are in a Tupperware container. Put them in your refrigerator make sure that the fridge is not on this coldest setting right you're gonna if you're if you're if you keep your fridge really cold keep it at least in the medium setting if not the warmer setting um while your flowers are in there i had a bride freeze her bridal bouquet last month so i'm a little a little paranoid about it oh it was such a mess um so just just make sure that that uh Let's see. I think you can take the boutonnieres out of the fridge in the morning, um, but take them out of the container, probably they'll be good three or four hours before, uh, before the wedding would be totally fine. Don't worry about like keeping them in there until the absolute last second um they they should be good to go i have included an, an extra boutonniere um for your officiant or somebody special or if uh the groom doesn't like the big giant ranunculus boutonniere that i made him um So yeah, again, congratulations. Uh, call me if you need me, and I wish you guys all the best. Take care, have a blessed weekend. Bye.